And now we are in the kitchen with Chef Ian. We're going to do some cooking with bison. What are we gonna make first? Uh, first, we're gonna start off with making a little bit of bison burger. What you wanna do is you wanna get your pan really nice and hot. All right. And with our bison burgers, you, this is just pure bison. There's nothing else in it. And it, it's a little bit leaner than most other kind of meats and beefs that we use. All right, so if you if you bit into a bison burger, would you immediately know it was bison, or would you would you have to think, is this beef or is this bison? You would know immediately that right. you're working with a bison burger as opposed to a beef burger because of the flavor of it. It's a bit more gamey and uh, has a lot more heavy tones to it than the beef does. All right, and it's leaner than, oh, than beef. Significantly amount bit leaner. As you can see here, it's mainly red as opposed to being that mix of kind of like the uh, red and white. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're not seeing the, the fat in there like you do with ground beef. It's looking good. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Why are we doing this? So because it has a, the lower fat content um, than some of the other burgers that you might do, such as lamb, beef, and pork burgers mm -hmm. and stuff, you just need a little bit of oil there to kind of help coast it along and give it some fat. Because as you can tell, when we first started cooking it, not a lot of fat was rendering out of it. Right, right. So this helps give us a juicy burger, like we're expecting, right? Yes, it does. All right. Helps give it that nice, juicy flavor and kind of helps the caramelization of it as uh -huh. well. Well, and I can see some pink along the edge. How do you know when it's done? How do you know when it's done all the way through? In our, in our kitchens, we just like to touch our burgers uh -huh. just to kind of see where it's at and see how far along it's coming uh -huh. in the cooking process. And with bison, you know, because it's a leaner meat, you don't want to cook it as far because the further you cook it, because it doesn't have as much fat content in it, um, the drier your burger will be. So you want to cook your bison burger more between like your medium rare and your medium stage okay. as opposed to, you know, your medium plus. All right, so you want a nice pink on the inside. Then. Yes, you do. All right. When you touch it, what are you feeling for? How do you know it's done? I'm, I'm feeling to see how much pressure and resistance it gives back to me. So right now, it's very, it's a little softer. Okay. All right, so which means it's around that rare stage, but here in a few minutes, we're going to get into that nice, beautiful, medium rare stage in which we would prefer to like to eat our bison burger. Okay. All right, so you think we're we're ready to plate this up? Uh, yes, we are. Wonderful. We're just ready to plate it up. Plate. Thank you very much. And you brought along a little bit of a a little bit of goat cheese for the bun. Yes, I did. So what I have here is just a little bit of soft goat cheese that we kind of like let temper, and it just kind of spreads on there, real nice and easy, yeah. which makes it. Very creamy. Right. Very creamy. And so we'll have our goat cheese here that we'll put across a nice both sides of our bun. All right. And so then we'll pick up our little, our nice bison burger. You see our beautiful color on that yeah, other side as well. Yeah, that's lovely. Just what we're looking for. And so we'll have our lovely bison burger there. And then we're gonna dress this We just a little bit of fresh tomato, and then some arugula as well. Fabulous. Which just kind of makes it into a very nice little burger we have here. Perfect. That is beautiful. Oh, Chef Ian, thank you so much. You're welcome. We made a beautiful bison burger, and now, what are we gonna make? Now we are going to make these beautiful little bison tenderloins right over here. We have a little English pea puree, some roasted heirloom carrots with a whole grain mustard Dijonais, and then also just a small bit of a blackberry reduction oh, as well. Oh, yum. 
Yum. So you say tenderloin. I mean, are there cuts on bison just like cuts on uh, Yes, you can still get your same cuts on bison as you would beef. Obviously, unlike beef, your tenderloin your, off the bison is a lot smaller. And so with that, you know, it comes with a, like a little bit more expensive price tag of it, but the flavor of the bison and what you get from it is really nice. Mm -hmm. When Japan's nice and hot, just once again, you use a little bit of oil to kind of help toast your bison along with your nice cooking. Get that in there. Fair enough. Then we'll also heat up a little bit of that. Lovely pea puree. All right, and pea puree, is this just peas, or is there anything else in there? Um, what we have here is just peas, water, with just a little bit of butter as well. Okay. And that will kind of help. The butter helps give it a little bit of fat, so that way it has well, a bit a more flavor. such a lovely green, too. And the blackberry Please. reduction, so is there sugar in there? Or? Um, here is just a very little bit of sugar. What I like to do is try to keep most of the things real natural without any artificial flavor. So I just add a little bit of sugar to it, but mainly it's just naturally blackberries, just cooked down um, with a little bit of uh, red wine. All right, nice. And then we have a lovely little heirloom carrots as oh, well. Oh, those are gorgeous carrots. So we're just gonna add in here for our lovely bison. That way it kind of helps get that bison flavor. And they both become nice and roasty. And how do you know it's time to flip? What are you looking uh, for? Just, I'm looking for that nice sear on Ooh, that one side. That's beautiful. That beautiful caramelization there where the proteins have really come together. And then every once in a while, you know, with it, you'll need just a touch more oil as well. Right, we'll just season our carrots just a little bit. Is so, that a danger of, of letting it dry out because there's so little fat? Um, yes. You know, you can dry it out very easily, and so that's one of the things you have to be, kind of be very careful with when you're cooking your bison and or your leaner meats, such as like elk mm -hmm. and lamb venison as well, that they can dry out quite quickly. All right, and so you're adding an oil you could add in other kinds of fat, too. Yes, butter also be another great kind of fat. Mm -hmm. You know, I love butter, as most of us do. <laughs> yes. And so you can always add tons and tons of butter if you'd like. But, you know, for me, I just like a little bit of canola oil, so that way it's a little cleaner flavor. All right, yeah, I mean, I know people will add in a, a pork fat or something like that, but that would kind of mask the flavor a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, and what I like to do is really kind of highlight the flavors in which I'm going for, you know, try not to have anything mask another flavor, and all of them kind of work harmoniously together to kind of enhance and shine my uh, bison tenderloin. All right, that looks great. And you're gonna compose a beautiful little plate here, right? Yes, we are. And so, you just have a lovely little pea puree. Then we're just going to put down just real nicely across the plate. All right, see? Heaven, now what we're going to also add is just a little bit of our mustard. Okay. You know, just real nice helps go with the bison and accent that bison real nicely. Is that a spicy mustard or? Um, it's just like a little Dijonese, so it's okay. a little mustard mixed with a little bit of mayonnaise nice. as well. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna take our lovely bison, we'll just place that right on top of our mustard. And then here we have our lovely roast Oh, roasted. and they look great. Heirloom carrots as well. Very nice, very simple. And then what we have here is a lovely bit of blackberry as well. We'll just kind of use those just to garnish our plate with, and then 
have a touch of red sauce with it. Oh, that is gorgeous. Just a little baby carrot greens as well, which most people kind of like throw to the side and don't consider actually using. But they work as beautiful little garnishes that we use in a restaurant all the time. Oh, that is just beautiful. Chef Ian, thank you so much. Ah, you're welcome.